I am not the only one who's here early. Hi, Eva. How's it going? Good, Andre. How are you? Not bad. So just from logistics, there's typically five minutes spent on housekeeping. See if there's updates on action items from prior meetings or anything and like anyone wants to share or announce. Uh, I don't think there'd be anything major for today. So it shouldn't take more than that before getting started. Sounds good. I'll drop off from the other Zoom I was on. Apparently, I'm still logged in. We've been doing what's called the book sprint. Are you familiar with that? So think, yeah, think about how screenwriters and like people who write movies and TV shows get together in a room and like crank out all the ideas. So producing from like zero to published in, in three to five days. And this used to be done in person. Now that it's gone virtual, it's two weeks, it's 10 days. And we're like in the middle of week two. We have a few folks from the group here and, and other people just writing about production identity. But it's like pair programming times 10. It's pretty intense. You're writing a book or a white paper? We're writing a book. We write about 45,000 words. That's a fair, yeah. good number of words. Yeah. Depending on, on how you edit the book, looking at like 200 pages at this point. Emily's been on it. It's been fun. Hey, thanks for jumping in last night and uh, getting that chapter four going. Yeah, I plan on trying to take a look again tonight. Well, I'm not doing a million other things. Yeah, it was interesting to have last week's sandwich in between the two things. Like I thought it'd be like so productive, but like everything I didn't get to like this two weeks, I had to cram in there. And I'm actually glad, glad to be back at just the single task. Just go, go, go. So your, your office shading, this is your first meeting as co-chair or that was the, the one last week? Uh, technically the first time in person co-chair. Last one, I was still technically co-chair, but I was out, so. Hey folks. Hey, hey. Hey, man. Hello. Let me get the link to the agenda and share it. The regulars know the drill, but whoever's new here, please add your name to the attendee list. Itai, how did it go with the security certification alpha testing? Um, it was uh, fine. I had uh, more feedback than I expected that I would have, um, but uh, it's uh, it's turning out to be a good test, I think. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I seem to have missed the call out, but well, I'm glad to have been able to participate in, in the authoring early early on. That was fun. Yeah.
Well, welcome everyone uh, to today's SIG security call. Uh, if you're new here, uh, please add yourself to the meeting notes and agenda. Uh, you will find under today's date uh, the attendee and like list and action items. If you have an update to share, uh, if you don't have an update to share, say no update. Otherwise, we can we can do roll call, and I'll pass it to either Emily or Brandon if, if you want to just like kick off and do like first before we get into talking with Eva, who's our guest joining us today to talk about confidential computing. So I can certainly go first. Um, so quick update on security day. We had over 30 talk submissions and a lot of them are actually really, really good. So it'll be very hard to select um, just a couple of them for a security day. So the team is working through that. I believe that Friday um, is when we have our meeting to go through and discuss everything. So we're, we're on schedule and we're doing really well. As far as the white paper goes, um, we've currently started our uh, narrative voice review where we're going to go through and talk about um, adding some consistency in the language that's used and make sure that the content of the document is easily readable, that some of the thoughts aren't, uh, that the thoughts are more cohesive throughout the doc. Uh, so if you had an outstanding comment in the document, we're going through and we're trying to resolve as many of them as we can. So we're looking good there. All right, I guess um, my update next. Um, so we, we kicked off the security assessment um, improvement. And so we are trying so out something new. Um, I know some, some folks on this call may have um, experience with it. We are attempting to use Miro to kind of brainstorm and kind of get ideas together um, for what we want for the security um, assessment improvements. Uh, if you're not already part of the Slack channel and want to participate, um, I'm going to paste in the link uh, to the issue, you can comment on it. Uh, this is a list of things that we are currently working on. So um, if you're interested, just feel free to jump in. That's it for me. In addition to the issue, there's also a Slack channel and there's gonna be an ongoing call, right? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, all of it should be, um, should be in that um, issue comment right there also paste it in the agenda. Fantastic. I don't see any other updates coming from the attendance list. Uh, Santiago, you wanna tell us about the Entoto uh, proposal? I saw that open up. Uh, you wanna do a call out for folks to chime in? Uh, sure, so uh, Entoto is gearing for incubation and um, Part of the due diligence process is to have approval by the SIG. And uh, yeah, so we discussed earlier on, it's been like an ongoing process, uh, but we're finally starting to uh, ask the SIG to uh, input their uh, self-assessment conclusion, which the self-assessment is probably, I would say number zero. It was the first one that happened. So there's a couple of uh, things we need to revisit, but. Uh, from discussions with uh, Sarah uh, earlier on, it seemed that since originally it was a recommendation for incubation, then it kind of makes sense to move forward with the original recommendation. Uh, then again, I think uh, being transparent and letting people chime in with anything new that, uh, that may raise concerns, it's valuable. So we posted the Google Doc uh, in the in the Slack channel and the uh, also Brandon sent it in the GitHub uh, PR. So uh, if you want to take a look and, uh, and discuss or input some feedback, and I assume that eventually uh, the state will come to a decision on what's the recommendation for incubation. Um, I don't know if uh, Emily or 
Brendan or I forgot who else is running it has any input on how the process is uh, supposed to go. If I recall correctly, at least what we did with OPA and HAPA, um, really it was kind of copying over the outline recommendations. Um, and I think with like OPA, what, what Dan did at the time was just say, okay, um, we did a security assessment. Um, here's what we recommended to date. You know, um, the project has taken steps to, to fix these issues and stuff like that. And I think it's just a short paragraph. I think the last one was filled up with um, by Justin and Dan and Emily, I'm guessing we can do something similar. Okay. The last one was a grad, was, I put it was graduation, the last one we did, I think, which is not necessarily exactly the same. Um, because the, the incubation one is supposed to be the most detailed review. Which, which was the last, did we do another? It was Harbour and OPA, I think. I think both were for graduation, so. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so we might need a bit more detail for incubation. Do you know anything specific that um, that we should add in? Is there kind of a, a template that we have to fill up? Um, is, there tem is there a template? Uh, uh, I'm going to have to check because I can't remember offhand. If there's... Yeah, I remember uh, the OPA and Harbor one being really loose, so it's just like, Sick recommendations, and then it's just kind of free from text, um, and that's where we paste it in um, the the security assessment results. Yeah, I I should be able to dig up the original slide deck that had the sick recommendation. Uh, from the top of my head, it was mostly it seems that the project has done necessary steps to like have a reasonable security uh, design principles and development practices and vulnerability uh, disclosure and management and uh, I, I even remember there was another blurb saying we recommend the CNCF to develop some budget for uh, UX UI uh, designers to help with the front end or like the user interaction with a toto uh, I, I can find like the specific text if that's uh, worthwhile, like if that's something that we can start working with. Yeah, I think that would be a good, good starting point. Okay. Great, sounds like there's a course of action there. Awesome, any, any other updates before we get into our guest talk? Anyone who wants to raise their hand? Without further ado, today with us, we have uh, Eva Black. Eva, I understand you work at Microsoft uh, and you're also part of the outreach committee for the Confidential Computing Consortium. You're involved in Open Enclave. You, you're doing a lot of work around these and the motivation for being here today is really about increasing awareness, um, comparing notes between similar efforts within the CNCF, seeing uh, what people are coming across and hopefully finding uh, how to best collaborate where there's an inter intersection of TEE enabling projects. Is that fair? Pretty close, yeah. Um, shall I start with a little intro to what confidential computing is? Is everyone already familiar with the, the concept? I think I you should probably try it, I think, because not everyone is, especially not everyone on the recording. Great. Um, so the idea of confidential computing is to extend protections around data privacy, data confidentiality, and data integrity from uh, when data is in transit, SSL, TLS, uh, data at rest, now to do those same uh, functions for data in use. So encrypted memory while applications are in use. There's different approaches to this. Folks have been building over the past several years. 
um, homomorphic encryption, differential privacy. Both of those are, are software-based. This one is hardware-based. And so each of the CPU vendors, Intel, ARM, AMD, um, and potentially more as well, I think the Power Series, the RISC Series also have some um, enable the encryption of memory pages and keep the entire application encrypted. The decryption key is either in hardware or not even on that machine. They could be um, uh, delegated temporarily to enable this workload to be run and then attested to where exactly it's running. Um, I'm not going to jump into the, the how, and also the how varies from architecture to architecture and cloud platform to cloud platform. Um, I put a link in the meeting agenda doc, and I'll drop it in the um, Zoom chat as well. The CCC um, outreach committee produced a white paper that's it's high level. It's designed just for general education for folks new to the concept. It's a great starting point. Our technical advisory committee is working on a much more technical paper right now um, while still being neutral and high level because each of the member companies and projects do do this differently. Um, and so my, my context, as Andre pointed out for me joining the call today is I've had a couple conversations with folks in different CNCF projects saying, yeah, we'd like to use this, uh, this these chipsets, this hardware capability to do things like mutually attested TLS or containers, which are fully encrypted or container image format that is encrypted and can only be decrypted in specific locations using attestation with third-party verifiability. And I'm kind of throwing word soup a little bit here because right now it does feel a little bit like word soup. Different projects are using or overloading terms um, and the even within the member companies in the CCC, I'm seeing a little bit of overuse of terms. And I don't know what's happening in the CNCF landscape yet, but other than the folks are like, hey, mutually attested TLS using SGX, we should do that. Like, okay, well, hang on, let's all get together and try to make sure first we're using common terminology. And then if possible, that we're not duplicating work too much in our open source projects, because we do have two foundations, both under the LF, working in somewhat overlapping spaces. We've got now, I think, nine open source projects in the CCC that all do stuff around using hardware enclaves. Are there common ways we can surface up those open source projects into CNCF projects that want to use those capabilities? And so my questioning began just with the Kubernetes um, steering committee and SIG security, like, hey, does it fit here? And they said, well, this looks like a, a CNCF level discussion should happen. And I ended up routed to all of you. Um, and so that is the context. And I would love to just sort of have a free form discussion for a bit. Uh, my, my goal being figure out how best to address the, these challenges, common terminology, and uh, common use of open source projects across multiple foundations. You mentioned, I think you said seven or nine projects under CCC. Could you uh, list what some of those are? We may be sure. Um, Open Enclave SDK, um, NRX from Red Hat, Graphene, and Occlum. Both are research projects. Um, Gosh, you're challenging my memory. Not all of them have, have gone through the full legal process yet. Some of them are still like- That's a good example. The TAC has approved, but legal hasn't been done, so the website isn't updated yet. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, there, there, there are a few like related projects, uh, at least from, from my vantage point, and I'm gonna let others chime in, but uh, certainly Spiffy Inspire, uh, get roped in with the desire to uh, test uh, based off hardware would have crossed properties and how can we do TPM at the station and then TE at the station. Uh, so there is, there's some nascent work there. There are uh, emerging projects. Well, they're actually <coughs> quite a bit far down a good road like Parsec. Uh, I know Justin Cormack is involved in, in that project, which is uh, a platform to provide uh, identity-based crypto operations at the edge, providing segmentation. Well, 
Edge is one of the use cases, uh, but it has many different applications. And it's an API for, for that abstracts hardware's root of trust that, that can abstract an HSM or a TPM, and it provides you this wire protocol that has been in a tested channel to do this, this crypto operations. But there, there's several, certainly many others. Um, and I'll, I'll open it open it up to whoever has like comments or, or feedback on, on what you've said thus far. Um, on the top of my head, uh, I can think of two projects. One of them is definitely in Kyoto. Uh, part of the feature work that we want to do is to use uh, hardware roots of trust to authenticate uh, functionaries within the chain. Uh, and that's been something we're, we've been trying to make happen for a while, but I don't think we have the building blocks uh, software layer. That's that's why we're, we're looking at the Open Enclave SDK and hopefully uh, the CCC can come and make like all the TPM stack a little bit more uh, manageable. Uh, I, I would really love that. Uh, another one that I was thinking about for the same purpose, and that's now sandboxed in the CNCF, is Keyline, which I, I wonder if you had a chance to talk with them. Uh, Keyline uses uh, TPMs and uh, the Linux kernel IMA uh, capability to essentially authenticate uh, states of hosts that are operating. Uh, it uses measure boot and like a, a bunch of little building blocks and uh, to make sure that uh, everything is within a consistent state. Uh, I wonder if there's like a possibility to collaborate and uh, be, like between the CCG and, uh, and the Keyline project. So I just pulled it up. It looks like Keylime is focused on measured boot or trusted boot rather than um, what we would call confidential computing. Right. So. Yeah, I'd like to kind of ask a question also. There's kind of like a conflation of um, yeah. features with that, right? Because I, I think there is some common ground with confidential computing and um, every other thing that builds on top of uh, mm -hmm. some kind of hardware root of trust or some hardware yeah. uh, modules. Um, and kind of, I think the main block usually relates to attestation. Um, may I briefly and, share my screen? I think it may help. Yep. This is how we're modeling the uh, conflation of terminology or, or overlapping domains and that what the consortium is focused on is the smallest circle in the bottom left which is programmable. Okay so this is like uh, library OS techniques like graphene. Ex um, that, yes that is a, okay. a type of example of, of uh, the resulting software that fits in this domain. We're trying not to address the whole space I mean there's a lot more Above that and then privacy preserving and computation that we're not addressing at all. And there's a pretty strong overlap with TPMs and trusted boot and measured boot through the use of hardware TEEs that is non-overlapping with what the CCC is focused on in our work as a foundation. So uh, I have a question regarding that. Uh, I assume that to make uh, this little circle on the bottom left, you are also working a lot on having the building blocks that are necessary. And uh, I wonder if, if in that sense, uh, there's a way for the for state security and CMCF to understand what things that are not like immediately interesting for you, uh, but may uh, benefit both communities if we uh, tackle it together. I'm thinking, for example, the Open Enclave SDK kind of feel like it falls on a broader circle, or at least uh, it can pour into other uh, uh, elements, for example. How so? Well, uh, the Open Enclave SDK allows you to build a arbitrary uh, trusted execution environment, which I feel is, uh, is was a bigger circle on. The Open Enclave SDK allows you to utilize a hardware TEE to build an application. Right. Uh, I could be wrong. And again, I, I don't want to put uh, words in your, in your mouth, but uh, my understanding is it was uh, an abstraction layer that allowed you to use multiple vendor-specific technologies to build enclaves. 
Uh, it is a hard, it, it is an abstraction layer that allows you to use multiple vendors, hardware TEEs to build applications. And that the terminology, like I said, is um, overloaded. But okay. the open Enclave SDK does not let you build a trusted execution environment, lets you build an application that leverages a trusted execution environment to perform some work. Okay, I, I'm having a little bit of issue seeing the distinction, but I, I, I it's probably. <laughs> um, I could say uh, Graphene or Occlum, or um, Occlum's an interesting example because it's, it's Rust-based. There's some parts in there that you build an application, you run that application somewhere. The application runs through a hardware TEE inside encrypted memory pages. And then you do need functions like attestation, key signing, um, key release policy management. But at this time, the um, open source projects don't have a lot of the orchestration around that. But something like Fortanex EDP or Anjuna, um, both commercial products, um, Edgeless also has one that integrates with Kubernetes to do key management and orchestration to do the key release policies so that when your application is um, being run by Kubernetes in a hardware enclave, to actually launch it, you have to uh, release it, decrypt it. And something has to coordinate where that decryption happens, if it's allowed to be decrypted and run on this machine or not. That, yes, there's certainly shareable libraries, I think, that could emerge from this of like, how do we do the key release and the key management? Um, so I'm aware of several projects that are kind of dip their toes a little bit in this, but not really go as far into it just because um, there isn't really quite um, a established um, way to do things today. Um, I know, um, you know, this is something that Kata container. So I think sick runtime would also be a good place um, to talk about this. Um, I think the parts, for example, with Enux, especially, um, there's a lot of talk about WebAssembly going around in SIG runtime. That could be an interesting place. Uh, I know Container D um, recently um, provided ways to manage a snapshot separately within a different environment, not necessarily tied to the 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 host operating system. Um, so there was this discussion in Kata containers where we are talking about. Um, so recently we developed encrypted containers. Um, you know how do we run the VM such that everything within the VM would be um, confidential. So this is if it's using, for example, AMD SCV, MKTME, and stuff like that. Um, and the, the whole part of the discussion was, okay, now um, if we want it to be truly confidential, we have to handle the distribution as well within um, the enclave or the encrypted memory. And so we had to kind of take parts of the ecosystem and also put them within the enclaves, which I think was a difficult part of it. Um, so I'm kind of trying to think about from a community standpoint, what we can do. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, just getting in touch with the, the groups of people that would be interested in it. Um, I think that uh, that would be something um, we could see with the SIG runtime has also interesting, uh, any, any channels that would be interested there. Um, in terms of education, I think there is a level of, of something that we can do about it. And I think that, you know, um, it, it may be a good um, maybe project for Zig security if there's interest that's built around it. Um, and last thing I can think of is I haven't taken a look at the list of projects, but um, you know, if CNCF, if these are projects which may benefit from being in CNCF, but then that's kind of a question about, you know, what's the gain of being part of CNCF versus CCC? 
Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I don't want to get into a competing Linux Foundation projects with each other, right. but rather collaborating. So I don't really want to, um, certainly not projects that have already applied to join the CCC and are accepted there. I'd rather look at how do we communicate across these foundations and support projects in each of their homes. Um, I would love to better understand which CNCF projects want to use uh, hardware-based TEEs, whether it's for key signing or um, in running the container in an enclave, what, however they want to leverage this type of hardware. I think if we can um, sort of surface up what scenarios or paradigms emerge, that'll help both help shape the projects that are still in their early phases coming out of research and entering into you know, being productized uh, and help shape the answer to your question, Brandon, of which, which foundation is the right home for which projects. Yep, and I actually, I think that I'm not sure that Emily, whether the white paper search landscape would be, you know, once that's, I know it's like almost completed, but once that's done, we can kind of have this discussion around that as well. Sounds good. I think there's definitely room in the white paper and the landscape to touch on a little bit of that for sure. Uh, and its current state, probably a bit late for updates, but once post QCon updated on and in the repo, we can certainly add an update there. Cool. I also have the question on my mind of is uh, CNCF6 security the best place for that work to happen? Or is this like, as I read your charter, it seems close to, but not necessarily within the current SIG charter. And I'm new here, so I don't know. I wanted to ask the question. My take on this is that we are we're here to foster the collaboration. Uh, I don't think we are looking to do um, technical projects that come of it. Um, more like we can help form the groups, form the discussions. I know um, there are already several, several people on this call. I know they're already interested in this. Um, so I don't think we would t be doing the technical work, but we can help, you know, get the right people together and kind of also communicate um, some of these discussions as well. Yeah, it's, I, I would say it's the starting point. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go ahead, but I just want to add, like, we're happy to avail ourselves to facilitate connections to the respective projects of interest and the right groups. Uh, go ahead, Emily, you were going to say. I, I was just going to say that for sure, we can definitely help facilitate making sure that you get the right points of contact and maybe help like, move that forward. We also have the mailing list, which has a ton of folks on it. So you're more than welcome to write something up and send it out to the mailing list to help facilitate um, some more attention on the on this particular topic. Thank you. Yeah, I would also um, create an issue as well. This is a good channel. Um, kind of create a suggestion and then usually we have a couple of people who just chime in on it. So you had talked about one set of example applications. I wonder if, and th that might have turned the light bulb for some, I wonder if you can talk about other use cases you're encountering, or perhaps what are some unsolved challenges for some of the nascent projects in CCC that may be areas of interest for folks to jump in and contribute, what is top of mind, what is like desirable, but like not necessarily near term and you're like looking to well we could really foster rally people collaborate be it like just problems within the boundary of a te or like across te boundaries one of the areas and i'm looking at this not I'm interpreting your question not as what challenges are the CCC projects trying to solve, but where are they running into things that relate to the CNCF? And orchestration, 
at scale of key release is one of them. Another is image formats. Um, and Justin, this might be a little bit directed towards you, I think, uh, around uh, projects that launch containers in enclaves, taking novel approaches to how they encrypt and sign those container images. And I think OCI just did a um, specification on how to do, or took a position on how one should do encrypted container images. And I'd love to help facilitate that collaboration so that people aren't reinventing the wheel. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that, um, yeah, OCI, OCI is a good place. And obviously both me and Brandon are involved there and Got it. would be it's interested that. in Sorry, working on that. I think that um, um, there's, I, I mean, there's a lot of work kind of planned, I'd say at this stage, mainly for OCI format changes. I think there's a lot of use cases that are not encompassed by the current formats. And there's a lot of um, discussion as to what things we need going forward. Yeah, and I, I think we can also bring uh, a couple other folks um, from OCI as well on this, right, Justin? Maybe Phil or Alexi or someone, or Vincent. Uh, I'm curious on, uh, has there been any benchmark study done as far as the, what's the computing cost for this uh, confidential computing, especially on the processing side of it, when you're doing the encrypted data and trying to process that and decrypt it and, and uh, process it and then encrypt it back and so forth. What are the typical penalties or what are the typical computing costs? It, yes, some benchmarks have been done. Um, the results vary wildly by uh, CPU vendor, by um, software architecture and by use case. So an example of where the cost can vary hugely is um, SGX does not support fork internally. And so some projects implement fork by jumping out to the host and starting up a new SGX process and the page um, swapping for that, uh, entering and exiting the enclave can be very, very costly depending on how you implement it or less costly depending on how you implement it. And so the benchmarks end up being, well, on this chipset, these two projects in this scenario have a 10 times different performance profile. Isn't that wild? 10 times? Uh... Some, of the, some of the use cases we see, there's a 10% overhead. And some of the scenarios we see have a hundred uh, uh -huh. thousand percent overhead there. Yeah, I can do my math. Considering whatever you have seen in terms of the fastest hardware or most uh, most intensive hardware implementation of this confidential computing, would you put that into the category of the 10% overhead? The low, yeah, that's the low end, right? Penalty. Yeah. I would also yeah. say that all of the CPU vendors are rapidly advancing this and coming out with new capabilities. I would expect those to have far less overhead than the previous generation. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of curious on that. Is there any uh, work towards standardization of the interfaces there? At the CPU layer? Yeah, at least like what, um, how should you communicate to enclaves, what is expected out of the interfaces? I know SGX has. Uh, all the implementations are different. They do yeah. key management in different ways. Some of them do key management in hardware, some of them do it outside, some of them can do interrupts, some of them can. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what I see across the CPU uh, or the chip vendor space is SGX is kind of a novelty. Everybody else has taken a different approach. They're working mostly at the hypervisor interface layer. When I look at um, AMD SEV or SEV SMP. When I look at uh, Intel TDX, not released yet, but announced in the plans. And when I look at um, IBM's uh, PEF. And they all take a similar, those three take a very similar approach. Um, Trust Zone and Opti is a bit different. Um, and then SGX is completely by itself in, in its interface. And so what I'm 
anticipating is uh, over time we'll see the layer above all of these where the common abstraction forms, right? It's not going to happen in hardware because every hardware is going to be different. It might happen at the, um, at the, the SDK level of like a C SDK to interact with the hardware. It will probably also um, happen at the orchestration layer. How do you launch a process or a VM into an enclave? And that's where I think the real work happens between the CCC and the CNCF. Like people, are, whether they're launching VMs or they're launching containers or they're launching uh, function as a service. Like, however they're launching it, they're going to need to perform actions like attestation, encryption, signing. And that should be consistent across projects and across cloud service providers, in my opinion. So I think, yeah, so I think you mentioned an interesting uh, point there on the SDK. So I'm curious because uh, different workloads require different types of securities, right? So you should be able to selectively choose where you really want a, the most rigorous uh, confidential computing workload versus this. So if you consider, for example, different microservices um, and some of the microservices might be running in a very high confidential computing um, environment as opposed to the others, which might not require that. So this, does this SDK provide that kind of flexibility to orchestrate your workloads? To be clear, I was not speaking of any specific existing project. I was making general statements about what I think things will do in the future. Okay. Um, but but this is well taken that, yes. But this I, is part of the consideration, I suppose, in those, okay. Exactly. I, I do believe that, um, I completely agree with your point that different workloads will have different security requirements. Some will want a very small TCB and very fine-grained, very careful and nuanced control over the code running in it and how it is launched. And some uh, consumers may want to just take a whole VM, take their existing, I don't know, um, ERP app and run it in a confidential VM. I might not want to, but somebody probably will. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I want to chime in with, uh, with a couple of thoughts. I think that the idea of uh, thinking or looking on all this communication uh, problems through use cases would definitely be helpful. So I can say that we are looking into this from uh, an integration perspective and bringing hardware of trust to and do basically build in with a SPF inspire the identities that's could like unified identities that could be used across all the system and bring in uh, hardware root of trust to it right so uh, the, there are different layers for it and like you can look into a SPF inspire from one attestation perspective but we are looking into it from another attestation perspective how we do an attestation of a hardware and making sure that um, agents where they run in can have another uh, another key and, a, and basically using another infrastructure that we can use for another layer of attestation. So uh, I, I kind of feel that understanding of all their possible or main use case in it and identifying projects in the SACA system would be definitely helpful because it's it's all unstructured knowledge at this point. That, that would definitely help to understand who is working on what and how we all collaborate more and better. Completely agree. I've uh, been thinking of this within the CCC as trying to define the on-ramps. How would a developer engage with this layer of securing their application? And defining the use cases from that perspective. There are other perspectives as well, but that is, I think the next step that we all need to do is define those use cases and how people are approaching it. Eva, as part of that on-ramp event, well, for, for the folks on like behind projects in the call today, as well as like end users like Eli, beyond the, the white paper, like 
studying that, what would be like the next steps you would point folks towards? I don't know if there is a, yeah, I, I don't have a specific next step. Um, part of my goal in asking and, and coming here today was to determine whether CNCF uh, SIG security is the right place to continue these discussions um, or, or not. And I, that question just came from talking to folks who are like, yep, that's a great conversation. I'm not sure where it should happen. So my question is to all of you, um, should this become like a, a working group or something within the SIG or a regular part of your meetings? Or should we create a separate thing to have these conversations and, and where we work on these use cases within the CNCF's scope? Because I'm also having the same kind of conversations more broadly in the CCC, uh, which also includes non-cloud native scenarios. So I hear from what you're saying, there's there's no defined space for people to get together within the realm of, of the CNCF. So there's that's like no question, place. Yeah. And you don't want to have a like ad hoc hey, come to me after if you want to jump in or contribute. Like, Brandon, uh, I'll pass it on to you. Yeah, I, I just, um, I think that creating an issue uh, would be a good first step. Um, at least we'll see that. It seems like there are, there is interest for individuals from chat that I can see. So um, if there is enough of a group that wants to go around this and there is a defined um, effort that can come out of this, like for example, um, you know, selecting the use cases like, like Eli mentioned, then um, we could have it as a project proposal and um, one of, the, if a co-chair signs off on it, it could be something like, um, you know, what Santiago did with the supply chain documentation Kind of just like it's a, it's a primer on um, you know, what is confidential computing, a couple of projects, and here are some of the use cases. Oh, um, so we do have that, um, by the way. I dropped a couple of links. I should have asked everyone to go read them. The Outreach Committee created a white paper that does outline the, the use cases for confidential computing. It's just not specific to the CNCF. Right. Okay. So I think definitely creating the issue first. It should be the the very immediate thing that happens, and then probably uh, drafting a notification to go to the SIG security mailing list with a link to the issue to help solicit some some interest in the area, and then depending on what the activity on the issue is, and then the next steps that come out come out of it, we can certainly look at doing a working group and adding something more concrete to the repo the very least to help provide some more documentation specifically about confidential computing for cloud native architectures and workloads. Which would probably cross pace to SIG runtime at OCI as well as they're the, probably the strongest other groups that would be interested. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we'll, we'll tag the, the, the various people in the issue once that's created. Justin, you said SIG runtime and what other SIG? I, well, ICI, which is another LF organization, but. Got it. Yep. A possible outcome of this would be that, you know, the conversations between OCI and CNCF uh, could end up in a working group under the CCC as well. Yeah, I feel there are like so many uh, different pieces and different groups. So there might be a need to like have a SIG CCC or something like this. Like uh, we definitely have some projects uh, in here that's been mentioned. It's like Spiffy Spire and uh, in total, like a couple of them for sure. And, and, and maybe others, but they're definitely bigger scope and landscapes for uh, for integration with the hypervisors and uh, functions and, and, and a bunch of other stuff for sure. So, yeah, I, I want to guess that, that uh, feature creep happens at the CNCF level, I think. And uh, 
in total, in a sense, for example, goes beyond cloud native, but it's it's why it's a very good home here, mostly because the community is very welcoming and, and there's a lot of uh, interest in innovation and uh, solving problem solving. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, people are also willing to hear about the use cases that go beyond containers and orchestration. I suppose, uh, regardless of where this happens, I believe it might be useful to think uh, of, of utilizing some sort of an API type based optional capability from the CNCF project to whatever being developed in the uh, confidential computing. So that it can be optionally used for different workloads or different purposes. So standard APIs may be a very useful thing for depending on the use case and depending on the application. Because this application I think goes beyond the, just the cloud and definitely goes into the edge environment as well. Oh yeah, there's a lot of 5G conversations around, around um, confidential and trust mm -hmm. computing. Exactly. So for next steps, how about I continue to come to this meeting since it seems like we're going to create an issue and we can track the work there for now. Um, and I'm having a conversation, you know, very much related to this in the CCC TAC, uh, which meets every two weeks. Um, mostly at the moment that is between myself and uh, Mike Bursell, who's my, my uh, peer on the NRX project and I'm on the Open Enclave project. And so the two of us are trying to sort this out as the two most mature projects in the CCC right now. Um, Turks are welcome to join. Yeah, I'm happy to help with the use cases if you folks will plan to uh, work on this, at least on, on, on a high level and maybe map per project sort of things we, we've been uh, touching uh, with or playing ways to see how it fit into the whole infrastructure, the whole idea. Okay. Seems this is a good step in the, in the right direction just to break walls and create a communication channel and use a liaison between the two groups for people to know what's being developed and worked by the different projects and the different foundations. And we can, as you said, not duplicate effort and work towards common goals. And through that, just enri enrich the ecosystem. There's certainly like desire to, for you, find consumers of Open Enclave. And clearly we've, we've identified a few that we can like help, like expand the footprint, but also take advantage of the benefits it provides. Uh, and I'm sure others will arise, but yet yeah, near term, like certainly in Toto, Spire for using, while well, solving the distribution of keys, there's certainly also a consumption aspect we can surface back to that station. I wonder if projects like OPA, well, in initially that were intended to be able to enforce rules and regulations at any layer of the stack, if it's something that, that could be done there. I see we have Ash on the call, um, maybe an area to explore. Uh, Andre, I think you've given me something else to think about. Um, could we create a sort of a list of CNCF projects that are surfacing up this kind of functionality? I think that having that list would be helpful to uh, track and, and organize interest and conversations around it. For sure. I'm, I'm happy to uh, take that action item and provide that list to start out, uh, at least the initial ones that have arised, and I'll open it up to others to add in. Cool, cool. I don't know if anything else anyone wants to share. JJ. Sorry, I joined, uh, I joined a little late. Uh, nothing much from me. I know Aradhana was supposed to present. I don't know if it happened. Uh, otherwise, I think uh, depending on her time, maybe we should see if we can have uh, have her presentation scheduled for um, 
next week or week after yeah so next week next week would be better let, yeah let me talk to luke um next week we have a key line presentation let me ask him how long that he needs for it um okay. which is also relevant to what we talked about today yeah, yeah. Uh, for the association portion so uh, let, let me have a chat with him, see how long he needs. Uh, right now, how, how long do you need for your, your slot? I can adjust time. Um, I mean, whatever time you can give me. Um, it's just for, you know, sharing and FYI. Um, I can send a link to the paper and you guys can read the draft. Not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Brandon, you've become a great fan of Miro boards. I wonder if we should start a Miro board for this. <laughs> we, should, we should start a sick just for Miro boards. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, nothing from me. No updates from me. Cool. Uh, Steven, Cameron, anyone else? No, nothing oh. from me. Um, I think you get, I think it's, I think this is really positive. Really like the, the work together concept here from the CCC. I think that's just absolutely awesome. Yeah, 100% agreed. Well, uh, Eva, thank you very, very much. Uh, looking forward to seeing you and upcoming calls and working together. I will yield my time back to the chairs. Emily? Oh, shit. I think that's everything for today. Does somebody have anything else outstanding? Nope. I think we're good. Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. There's, there's a Zoom option to download the comment history, right? Yeah. You can, um, you can save it. I, I saved it, the last one. I can okay. save or attach it. Might be a good idea to dump that in the meeting notes. Yeah, I, we're, we're working on something to, so this is downloadable if you log into the CNCF um, account, but we still don't have a way to, to, <laughs> to do that efficiently yet. Yeah. Hey, Santiago, while well, I see you here, there's been a lot of interest and demand to see a upstream integration between Entoto and Spire. Uh, be it for protecting the total machinery and at the same time, well, for the supply chain log to be used as attestation criteria huh. for like um, binaries of known provenance to be issued identities. I, I wrote to Justin about it that we'd been meaning to reach out to you. It's still on our list, but probably be setting up a time so we can riff a little bit over that. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. Uh, the, uh interested in knowing because I know there's at least it makes me think of a uh, supply chain transparency uh, in a sense and I think that's uh, something that's coming up uh, soon in other communities as well so I wonder if we can make something yeah. happen uh, in the near future. The, the request originated from the DOD from their chief software officer directly said like hey like there's, there's interest far and wide within the DOD with what we're doing with CNCF for both projects. But this is like the most desirable integration, what we'd really like to see come together. I, I think I've got your contact or I'll just get it from, from Slack. Did, did you end up moving to Tucson? No, I, I'm now in Lafayette, Indiana. I ended up at Purdue University. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Well, that's um, it. That's great. Yeah, it, it was a tough decision uh, between uh, the University of Arizona and the Purdue University, but, uh, but I'm I'm happy with the decision I made. Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> Either way, you would have made the right call, right? Can't go wrong. Yeah, but both the uh, that that's an issue. You have to make a call. <laughs> if I could split yeah. myself and in, in both places, I think that would have been optimal. But it is what it is. Great. Creole food has a little bit more flavor than Southwestern, which is also very tasty. But well, this is in Indiana, so it's uh, Midwest. Oh, uh, not at Lafayette, Lafayette uh, Louisiana, but Indiana. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
So well, yeah, the foot is not as great as <laughs> Southwestern. Good but, uh, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'll find charm in the in the Indiana. I think so far I've been liking it a lot. It's uh, not so different from New York in some respects. So so that's that. Um, but yeah, awesome. Yeah, cool. Santiago, you got to send us a picture of your, your guitar. I see the, the case. <laughs> oh, I, I can probably, it, it is open. It's a, it's a PRS uh, oh, C24, nice. uh, the 2008 model. With, uh, uh, the, I think it's a Dragon 2 pickups. I forgot. Cool. cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. I really like it. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, nice to uh, catch up, and uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, next week yeah good yeah. to see you chat soon yes bye-bye take care